everyone. Welcome to another episode of Toronto Today. I am Sarah Peraria, filling in for Luca Brizano, and I'm joined with none other than Michael Singh. Mikey, how we doing? Sarah, it's good to uh, have you on here. As I told you, you know, you got called in from the bench last minute, and we appreciate you doing this. And no pressure if you mess up. It probably won't be worse than Luca. So just do your thing and, and let's talk some Toronto sports because it's it's exciting right now. There's a lot to talk about. Absolutely. Thanks for the kind words. We have to start off with none other than Freddie Van Vliet called up as an all-star for the first time. What do you have to say about this? It's a uh, it's well deserved. I mean, come on. Fred Van Vliet is is one of the most likable players right now, not just for the Raptors, but I think in Toronto sports. And his story overall is just so incredible. He's an undrafted NBA All-Star. This is a guy that was undrafted out of Wichita State in 2016. He spent some time with the Raptors 905 in the G League and kind of worked his way up. And we've really witnessed his development year by year. And he took another step forward this year. And I got to say, it's well-deserved. He becomes only, what, the fourth undrafted NBA All-Star in the last 30 years. The first since Big Ben, Ben Wallace with the Detroit Pistons in 2006, I believe it was. So um, I just, I, I can't really find the words right now to describe how special this is for someone like Freddie. And as a Toronto sports fan, it it really means a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it really, like you said, like it, it just shows how, uh, you know, the Raptors franchise has grown so much. It's really putting us on the map even more so than before. Um, you know, since the departure of Kyle Lowry, Fred's also really stepped up to the plate. Do you think he's he's gotten better since Kyle's left? He's definitely emerged more as a leader. He, this is now, I mean, Pascal Siakam gets all of his flowers, but this is now a Fred Van Vliet's team. And he's acting like it. He's taking those shots. He's He is the leader, like I said, of this Toronto Raptors squad. And he's earned it. I mean, we talk about his development and, yeah, credit to the Raptors and the way that they develop their players. But Fred Van Vliet on and off the court is, is that guy right now for Toronto. And I got to credit Lowry because... This was this was Lowry's guy. I mean, Lowry took him under his wing. And you could see a little bit of Lowry and Fred Van Vliet, but at the same time, at what, 27 years old, I mean, you can make the argument that Fred Van Vliet is probably as good as Lowry was, maybe even better with the season that he's having. So Freddie, um, overall, just yeah, it's it's such a good story. I can't say that enough. Yeah, no, I think we all are excited to see Freddie in the all-star game. Big news for Toronto. Let's keep it with the Raptors, though, and talk about last night's game against the Bulls, against DeMar DeRozan. The Raptors came out on top, winning 127 to 120. What do you think about last night's game? It was another another close one for the Raptors, eh? Like, it feels like this is what has been the, the, the motto of the last couple of games, where every game kind of feels like a playoff game. Luke and I were on the show about a week and a half ago. We were talking about the Raptors' upcoming schedule. And they're facing teams like the Chicago Bulls that they faced last night twice, the Atlanta Hawks, the Miami Heat, and the Charlotte Hornets. We're now, I believe, seven games into that stretch, and the Raptors have won five, six of those games. They're making a case right now where they're, they could be one of the, the, the dark horses right now in the Eastern Conference. and to cover against the spread, the three and a half point spread against a top team in the Eastern Conference again. I mean, the Bulls were number one in the East heading into this one. Against the Miami Heat, they were the number one team before the Raptors beat them. So the Raptors are doing it against the Eastern Conference's best teams. And it's a it's a team effort, right? You got Pascal Siakam last night dropping 25 points, Scotty Barnes 21, OG 21, Freddie 21. Gary Trent Jr. 16, Chris Boucher 16. It's a team effort, but at the same time, it's it's a six, seven man team right now with the way that Nick Nurse is kind of rolling out his rotation. But it's it's good time right now to be a Raptors fan as they're competing in every single game, night in, night out. 
Yeah, no, for sure. And I think what you said really, you know, hit the nail on the head with that. It is very much a team, you know, that's relying on one another. Because as you said, you know, you have players like OG, Pascal, Gary Trent Jr., Freddie, they're all really stepping up. And it's not like, you know, you're relying on your one or two guys here, but it really seems like it is such a team effort. And, you know, the Raptors were in a bit of a slump in November. We were looking really weak in the fall. And it's Nick Nurse has really turned this team around and these players are really coming up. And is it safe to say that, you know, now they're a serious contender in the East? It's, it's hard to argue against it, right? And it's not like this team has been doing this for two weeks. They've been doing this for over a month now, and they've really been doing it since they were healthy. At the start of the season, they were missing Pascal Siakam for about two months. And then you had OG and Anobi go down. Scotty Barnes was missing a game or two here and there. Gary Trent was out for a bit. But now that we're seeing this team healthy and kind of what Masai envisioned, it's hard to, to argue that this team isn't a serious threat in the East. And I'm, I'm sure that there's no one in the Eastern conference that wants to play this Raptors team that knows how to play tenacious defense. And what's the old adage defense wins you championships. I mean, this Raptors build team is built for it. I do believe Masai and company need to go out at next week's trade deadline and add another significant piece to this group. But it's, it's a very likable team too. Like it's, it's easy for this team to really to get behind. I mean, it feels like this is homegrown. Like this isn't a, okay, let's go get Kawhi Leonard for a year. All those guys, aside from Gary Trent Jr., the Raptors brought in and either signed them as undrafted free agents or, or drafted them themselves. And that's why the scene is so relatable right now. It, they've, they've gone through the struggles, the lows and the highs. And right now they're on a very big high. And I don't see them in the near future, at least coming down from it. Well, I hope you're right because they have another huge game tonight against the Hawks. So the Raptors are two point favorites against the Red Hot Hawks. What do you predict? Yeah, it's a it's a two point spread, and it's another sign of, of Vegas kind of giving Raptors their their flowers there. The Raptors two point favorites against a Hawks team that's coming off a really impressive win over the Phoenix Suns last night snapping the Phoenix Suns 11 game win streak. The Hawks in their last 9 games, they're 8 and 1. But their only loss over that stretch was on Monday night to the Toronto Raptors, a 6 point game. But I do have to put an asterisk beside that because Atlanta was missing their best player. They were missing Trey Young, who by the way went off last night for 43 points. So he'll be in the lineup tonight and the way that the Hawks are playing, I mean, this is a team that many, many thought were were serious contenders again in the Eastern Conference. They didn't play like it at the start of the season, but they're playing like it right now. And it, it's it's a team you probably don't want to get in front of. But if there's any team in the East right now that can that can spoil their party and rain on their parade, it's it's the Raptors. Safe to say it's gonna be a battle tonight between both of these teams. Is it also safe to say that the Hawks are a lot better than their 25 to 26 record? Yeah, yeah, they're they're I mean, right now they're below 500 and as I mentioned, like this this Hawks team on paper was supposed to be so much better. They went to the Eastern Conference final last year and they you can argue they only got better. They only got older. They developed a little bit more. Their team is so young. So now that they've kind of figured out how to piece it all together, they're a dangerous side. And we talk about the Raptors being kind of dark horses. I mean, Atlanta's right up there. I wouldn't be surprised if come playoff time, we're talking about Atlanta being a, a playoff team in the Eastern Conference. So, yeah, I think they overall they are a lot better. They're 8-1 and one against the spread in their last nine games. But, again, Toronto's proven no matter who they're playing against, they'll, they'll make it close, which is why, you know, it's, it's a two-point spread. So, they just have to win by two, three points tonight to, to cover that. And for me, that's like a pick them game. Pick mm-hmm. whoever's winning, like just whoever, whoever you think is going to win, just bet on them. And for me, I think it's the Raptors, especially when you consider Atlanta's record against the Raptors. They're three and 11 straight up in their last 14 games against Toronto. So Toronto has Atlanta's number. 
can they continue to do that tonight with the Hawks rolling? I mean, we'll see. This will be the real test. I don't think Monday night really counts because they didn't have Trey Young. So tonight they had Trey Young. And if the Raptors find a way to pull this off, it's we're talking about the Raptors in a different light come Monday. It's going to be a big night for Toronto. Let's hope we get that W. And uh, let's switch it up to both of our favorite sports, I think, and probably your favorite team here, Toronto FC's Josie Altador. According to Mark Stein, Altador is going to be signing with the New England Revolution. You know, break it down for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and first of all, favorite team, I'm an unbiased journalist, Sarah. No favorite <laughs> teams out here. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> um yeah i had to like read it twice when i saw mark stein was the one breaking the news that josie altador would be heading to the new england revolution and it's a it's a move that was i guess a long time coming toronto fc i was told earlier this offseason they made the decision that josie Altador won't be a designated player back with the club and over the last stretch, they've been working towards a buyout of his contract. He has one year left on his deal, a designated player deal. And of course, in MLS, you're only allowed three DPs. And TFC just to see that Altador is not worth that anymore. No one would really take that contract. So what they're able to do is they have one off-season buyout per year, which doesn't count against their salary cap. So they're going to exercise that one off-season buyout and Altador is going to be moving on to, to join the New England Revolution and Bruce Arena's side, who is continuing to shape up like a dangerous side. They won the Supporter Shield last year. They lost Tejan Buchanan to, to Club Bruges, but they're still a very dangerous team. All right, Mike. So I might have, you know, my reasons as to why Josie Altador is leaving. He is a much more, you know, mature player. But what do you think? Why do you think it was time for him and TFC to part ways? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, Sarah. And look, every every player gets to the stage of their career, especially when you're you're built kind of like Josie Altador, where at a certain age, you know, time catches up with you. And this is a guy who has struggled to stay on the field. And when you're a designated player in Major League Soccer and you're a team like Toronto FC that likes to go out and, and spend money. That comes with a lot of expectations. And it's safe to say over the past two, two and a half years, Josie Altador has not met those expectations. He's he's a guy, who, like I said, who struggles to stay on the pitch. He's not playing very often. And he hasn't been scoring as much as he used to be. So he's a big part of the reason why TFC haven't been as successful as they have been because he hasn't lived up to that designated player tag. And like I said, in Major League Soccer, that's just so important. So I think it's just the right time for, for the club to maybe even a year or year and a half too late for the club to kind of give him a send-off. And I hope he gets a proper send-off because what he did for the city, 20 ML 2017 MLS Cup MVP, he gave us that goal. I mean, he's he's a Toronto FC legend. Yeah, no, I, I think they will, though, as well. I think they know what he's done. And yeah, it might be a little, you know, expired at this point, how long he's been at TFC. I agree with you there. But I think they uh, they acknowledge what he's done. And Toronto definitely has as well. But let's switch it up and talk about something that I know so much about, eSports. <laughs> <laughs> so the Toronto Ultra are opening their 2022 Call of Duty season this weekend. What can you tell us about Toronto's professional Call of Duty team? What can you tell us about it, Sarah? Not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, hey, that's fine. That, you're behind the trend. Esports <laughs> is growing, growing rapidly, and this is a sport that you can bet on. So what I can tell you about Toronto's Call of Duty team, the Toronto Ultra, is that they're really dang good. They went to the finals of the 12-team Call of Duty League last year, only lost to Atlanta FaZe in the finals. Of course, FaZe Clan, one of the most renowned esports organizations out there. But they picked up where they left off this season in 2022. They won the preseason kickoff classic tournament that was held about two weeks ago. 
and they're looking to, I guess, to go all the way this year. They're one of the favorites and they'll open their, their 2022 season against the Seattle surge and their team that, you know, they beat two weeks ago in the kickoff finals. And overall, I mean, esports is, is is a hot market, and if you can kind of get some insight into what they're doing out there, you can make some 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 good money. So we can talk a little bit about their matchup this weekend. Like I mentioned, they're facing the Seattle Surge, and Seattle's a team that they finished last place last year in the league. They went and they won just twenty three percent of their matches, so they rehauled their roster this season. And they looked really good in the preseason tournament, as I mentioned, making it all the way to the finals. Toronto won that match 3-1 of the best of five to give some insight as they play like three different game modes. And if you win a game mode, you win a point. So it's the first one of three points of the best of five. And Toronto's good at all three game modes. So that's why they're so dangerous. So heading into this one, they're slight favorites. They're minus 130 straight up. But if you take them to cover a two-point spread, so win by two, let's say 3-1 or 3 nothing, then you get plus 165 odds. So esports is is growing, and I think pay attention if you want a, a way to make money because I know a lot of people that bet on that market. So we're taking Toronto to win. I'd say so. Like okay. Again, it's not the best odds, but if you can take them to replicate that performance uh, from two weeks ago and win 3-1, then you're, you're looking at plus 165. So I would say, yeah, definitely uh, lean Toronto in this one. And their season gets underway. It's going to be a long season. But uh, Toronto's looking like one of the favorites early on. Well, I appreciate the insight, Mike. <laughs> I feel like I've learned something today already. Um, I'm going to send it back to you, though. Let's talk about the best bets for what we just covered. For sure. So Luke and I do this segment every every episode. and. I'm sitting at 11 and nine in my best bet. So I'm going to go, what I've been doing lately is I've been betting on a lot of Toronto sports teams because that's, that's what I know. And honestly, I started off shaky because I was betting like random NBA games. But since I reverted back to these Toronto sports, I've been, I've been pretty money. So let's keep it there. And as I mentioned, listen, esports is hot. Let's keep it with the Toronto ultra. So I am taking the Toronto ultra over the Seattle surge at minus 130. So I'm not going to take the spread just to play it safe here and try and get back to Luca, who, by the way, is picked up another win last night in his best bet. I'm going to do his best bet for him. He was kind enough, even though he is uh, on the IR right now, he was still kind enough to uh, place his best bet today. So Luca won yesterday with DeMar DeRozan. And I got to say, Luca got bailed out because the Raptor game went to overtime. And if it didn't go to overtime, DeMar DeRozan wouldn't have hit that prop bet. So he got bailed out there, and he is 13-7 and seven right now. So Luca's Luca's pretty dang good at this, I got to say. So as usual, Luca will be sticking with the NBA. He's going to take the Bulls to cover a one-and-a-half-point spread versus the Sp Pacers tonight. They're actually the, the underdogs here, if I'm reading this correctly. Um, oh, sorry. No, they are the favorites here. One-and-a-half points at minus 110 against Indiana. And I think everyone can kind of read into why uh, the Bulls are one of the best teams in the East. Indiana's the opposite of that. So it makes sense. And I'm kind of surprised to see those odds. So those are our best bets for the weekend, Sarah. All right. Well, you heard it here first from <laughs> Mikey saying him and Luca both doing amazing things with their best bets. So listen to them if you want to make some money because it seems like they know what they're doing. But it's go. been a Absolute pleasure filling in for Luca. Uh, Mike, always a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, no, thanks, I hope Sarah, okay. <laughs> No, you did. You did really well, actually. Maybe we can have you on more often instead of Luca. <laughs> <laughs> Luca's well, gonna listen back to this and just come back on Monday with, with a vengeance. Pissed. <laughs> well, um, it is yeah, always Mike. a pleasure chatting. And this has been another episode of Toronto Today. I'm Sarah Pereira. Once again, my Twitter at Sarah Pereira. You guys can go follow me and Michael Singh. Uh, his Twitter at Michael Singh 94. I was trying to read it. Really small font there. <laughs> <laughs> but go follow him as well. And we'll talk soon.